Whew, this was a great first game. Well, before I get to the game, I thought I'll do something um, to send home the teams that have not qualified for the round two in Forma and for which I have a shirt, which are not that many, but again, um, probably let's do it. I might pull them out late, later. If everyone is gone, we can wear others. But first one to go. Yeah, let's go for Peru because they were the first disqualified. Sorry, Peru. Really sorry you're not there anymore. But it's you are, you go you were go already home. And the second one I have hanging here is Australia. I have not worn it, I think, on the video. I'm not sure about that, but yeah. Australia, that's the one from 2006 where they made it to the second round. This year they were in contention until the last game, but not really close. I think Peru overall was closer. What a game that was. Seven goals. And yeah, I like both teams, France and Argentina. And I was happiest at the beginning when I saw they play exactly how I wished for in jersey wise. France, blue, white, red, as they should, it looks wonderful. We might discuss whether the colors shouldn't have been worse. If you saw the warming up jackets, they had actually the royal blue and the, the dark blue here. I still think it looks better this way. Got them here. Still think it looks better this way, but the other way would work maybe, maybe as well. And I already said that my preferred version would be to have the shoulders a little bit white and red over. I think this would look fantastic. I understand Nike wants to make if uh Frost, a new identity that is very non-reminiscent of Adidas, which was their look for basically since forever until 2010. Um, also, uh, Argentina played in their beautiful Albi Celeste shirts with black pants, white socks. It was a wonderful matchup to watch and it was a wonderful game to watch overall considering everything. I was more in Argentina's camp, but uh, France overall showed finally that what they can do. And I think this is also a good thing that we saw that. Uh, so favorite jersey matchup, let's put it right out there. Uh, this is what I want to see. Classic jersey matchups. Now, the game, uh, seven goals and the first half, you had the feeling that Argentina has a lot of possession, wants the ball, but didn't know what to do with it. And France was sitting back very uh, structured and uh, well organized. And Argentina couldn't find a way. That's why they had high possession. They also had many passes, but most of them were just going around. There were no really dangerous passes. And then Mbappé takes off. And I I know, I, I, I my wife was watching with me and I tell her, Watch this, watch this, this, this guy's fast, this guy's fast, and then there's a penalty. Yes, it was a fully deserved penalty. Before that, Griezmann hit a free kick on the bar, and there you could already sense Argentina might be in for a long day today. And yeah, the penalty, Griezmann converted it, but it was really Mbappé's goal. I mean, uh, amazing how fast this player is. I know the Argentinian defense is not, uh, not known for speed, but... He was in another league. This was absolutely in another league, what this guy was doing at this moment. Then um, Argentina, yeah, it, they tried to get something going, I had the feeling. But yeah, it was not going in the right direction for most of the time. I mean, there were a few half chances. And then Di Maria takes a shot and puts it into goal. And from then on, game on. And I was very happy to see that. I actually thought that Argentina could have made a second one. If it, um, it was not a clear chance, but there were there were chances to make a second one. Second half even was better. I mean, it was a very intriguing first half. And I was happy that there was actually an early goal. Um, honestly, I would have thought that Argentina should get the goal so that France is moving out a little bit. But actually, uh, in the end, it worked out well because um, Argentina needed to do something and France didn't want to give up too, too much space. You needed to get France out of it. And that's what happened at, at the beginning of the second half. Uh, a goal that was basically all messy. Uh, Mercado, you could see, he wanted... I believe he wanted to pull his leg away 
got hit on the leg and it go it deflects and goes perf perfectly into goal. Uh, this is goal is 90% messy. I know the goalkeeper will have saved it, so Mercado's touch was uh, important. But this was nine, a 90% Messi goal, and I thought, this is great. Now, we have, not only is our Argentina the team are really rooting for in front, they turned the game around. This will give them a little bit more uh, togetherness, so you know, just, just more momentum. And also, France finally has to show what they're made of. And boy, did they show us. I think uh, the turning point, in a way, was this weird situation, I think in the 55th minute, when the Argentinian defender and the goalkeeper had a miscommunication and Griezmann almost made a goal and um, an argument can, can be made there. His shirt was pulled. I'm glad there was no penalty given, but I think if there was a penalty given, no one could have complained about that. So yeah. Uh, that was kind of, and then you had the feeling there was France got the upper hand and then Pavard makes a goal. I mean, this is the second great goal by a defender. The other one uh, was the Spanish goal by... Why am I so bad with names? I don't recall it now, but uh, the second goal of Spain against Portugal uh, was also uh, maybe even better than shot, but what Pavard did here, wow. That was a great shot. And then Mbappé uh, takes off again. In the box, uh, totally dominates with one touch, has uh, three defenders on the wrong foot, makes a shot. Probably Armani should have saved that one, but it was a really, really unlucky unlike shot. If he's just a centimeter to the left, centimeter to the right, he, he will save the shot. It went right between his hand and his leg. Um, on a good day, he saves it, or on a day where everything's going for Argentina, but it was not. And at that moment, yeah, Argentina tried to come back, but then got caught on a wonderful counter-attack, uh, and again, Mbappé. He was in a league of his own in this game. Uh, when he came off, uh, this was the first time in this World, World Cup that I actually applauded a player. And that was for for our Argentina. I think if he, if it would have been in the stands there, even with all the Argentina fans, whatever, Again, I was more on the Argentine side. I have sympathies for France. I think if France continues playing like that, I really think they have, have, have it in them to win this. You saw also when they were celebrating, there was team spirit. This is a team that is uh, suddenly un uh, seems to be united and not, not disjointed. So that was a good showing. I think France for the first time really showed what they're made of. Uh, they had some adversity, being 2-1 down. They turned around and made it 4-2. At that moment, the game seemed to be killed of a little bit. I mean, yeah, slight hopes because, you know, there's Messi and Messi got his chance in the 85th. And if that defender of France isn't there to trip up Messi slightly so that he cannot get a shot, well, that would be a goal. And it also is kind of the difference between Argentina Messi and Barcelona Messi. Um, I always had the feeling that Messi is doing the things that he's doing at Barcelona, but uh, he plays with better players at Barcelona. We can discuss about why do we have Mascherano, we can discuss the lineup. I mean, none of the other stars was, this, this was purely, yep, Messi. If Messi made the lineup, it was basically saying, I'm putting everything, everything on, on my shoulders. Uh, other than that, the coach said, Messi, you're the guy. Uh, no ego in, yes. We can always discuss Iguain, he's missing chances like crazy, but I think he would be the threat, the strong threat that actually this team could need. No Aguero, uh, he came in um, later, and no Dybala. I already talked about Dybala um, in my Argentina in Trouble video, um, or Teams in Trouble video. Yeah, the balance doesn't seem to work with Argentina for some reason. Um, but I would say our Dybala and Iguain uh, together, that's a Juventus partnership. <sighs> France has four great offensive players and they all, they, they also are the ones that make the noise. It's Mbappé, it is Giroud, it is Griezmann, it is um, Matuidi. Those four can roam freely and the rest sits back and gives them a st stability. And I wonder why can't Ar Argentina do the same? I understand, it's not the same type of players. But I think you could find something that with a Dybala, you have 
even with with, with the Maria, you could create something in front. Make maybe uh, Igo in the center. Uh, have Messi come from uh, his preferred side, and you know, maybe you can put Aguero on the wing or Dybala on on the wing. I this is something that I do not understand. Well, I'm not the greatest uh, soccer tactician and coach, but I. It seems strange to me that you cannot make this work. So back to the game. Um, Aguero comes in, and I was very. He had his shirt was cut here, whether he wanted it that way or not. Uh, my wife said uh, it's probably it's probably because they don't have the right size because it's more he's a very square type, uh, jokingly. And it really uh, Aguero looks very squat. Let's put it that way, and very chesty. And you didn't see Aguero until he scored in the goal in the 93rd minute. Um, why they didn't put anyone else in? I understood that you had to take Rojo out because he was close to a red card. Why they didn't put in one of the other, Iguain and Dybala, uh, is a little bit beyond me. Uh, I couldn't see Aguero. Aguero I saw twice He's when he scored the two goals. Maybe this is a sign for him. Yeah, he scored this goal, and then I think Argentina on this one counter-attack where uh, Otamendi pulls back uh, the French player, and then they, it becomes a scuffle, and there they killed the momentum. I'm not saying they would have scored the equalizer, but at that moment they completely killed the momentum of the game. They had something going, and France had the chance to kill, to kill it off. That Giroud couldn't kill it off at the corner flag is a, is, is a different story. Argentina got their one chance, but it was not that big of a one. Uh, the other thing, the last thing I want to say about the Argentina play, uh, there were a few scenes where um, Argentina player is trying to attack, like Mesa or uh, Perez. They try to attack, and then there's Messi there, and kind of paralyzed, they give the ball to Messi. Messi, 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 we have to give the ball to Messi. It seemed like uh, there was no confidence from the others. There were a few situations where I thought, with a little bit more courage, you can make a goal and make and go for it. But all in all, seven goal game, great game, very entertaining. Um, it was a little bit killed off by the 4-2. I was hoping that um, maybe get a 3-3 and then someone scores a 4-3. Uh, but really wonderful, entertaining game. Exactly what you want to have in a knockout game. Um, cannot wish for more. I'm sorry Messi is out. Um, I'm happy France is moving on. I think France can do damage. France, I think, can give even Brazil a run, run for the money. Um, yes, they had some mistakes back there. I just liked what I saw today. Um, this really solid, on the back solid and forward, if you have Mbappé, if he can keep keeps his form, who there are not many that can stop him. Um, this was an amazing performance. Uh, I really, I, it's a long time that I've seen such a dominating performance by a single player. Where you just know when he has the ball, oh, there's a severe danger. And maybe he saw the ball too little. So this is my personal opinion on that. That game was actually my predicted final, kind of the dream final that I had. I, I, I said it in my prediction video at the beginning of the World Cup, I don't put too much uh, faith in this prediction, especially starting at the quarterfinals. Um, so I never really thought that it will be an Arch Argentina France final, but boy, this would have been a worthy final. Well, we'll get a different final and let's see. I hope the other games live up for it. I'm not quite sure. I think the Brazil Mexico game I have mar earmarked to be of similar quality, and then we just got it. Tonight, Portugal against uh, Uruguay, or the other way around, actually. Yeah. It has the potential, I just don't see it. Both teams are too solid on the back. Let me know what you thought. Visually, it was a great game. The score was a great game. I think there was every, everything, maybe, unless you're an Argentinian fan uh, like me, the outcome was maybe not all, but other than that, wonderful, wonderful game. I want to see more of that. So, keeping my fingers crossed, I, again, don't put much faith in that. Let me know what you thought about the game, jersey matchup, whatever I said here how you would have Argentina play, and I will talk to you soon. Well, I forgot one thing. I need to send Argentina home. Very sorry to do this, but yeah. My Argentina jerseys. It will. I hope it will not get too empty here. I have still France, Spain, Brazil and Portugal in the running here. 
I'm not sure if all of them will make it, but yeah, my Argentina 2008 jersey with 2010 printing, which makes it a little bit unique. That's the one they won the Olympic gold medal in. And then the away jersey from 15, which I actually like very much. Maybe the color could have been a little bit darker, but yeah. Those two are going to the closet and we'll see. Ah, oh, I have Sweden also, so five teams. Five out of 14, 15 that are left, one third. Okay, again, talk to you soon. If you enjoyed this video, please hit like and subscribe to my channel. If you've already done so, I would like to thank you for your support. It is very much appreciated. Also, check out the accompanying blog at the link provided in the description below and at the end of this video. Thank you for watching and until next time.